Hi, this is Sangeeta Saxena, editor Aviation and Defense Universe from the Dubai Air Show. And here in the Dubai Air Show, we are in the U.S. Pavilion sitting with Ashmita Sethi, our head for Pratt & Whitney in India. And it's just lovely because we know it's always a pleasure to meet a fellow Indian in foreign lands. Ashmita, welcome to ADU. And this is just the right time to ask you, how is the show here? You know, it's post-pandemic, one of the brightest spots uh, you know, to uh, facing that the life is coming back to normal. So uh, let's hear it from you. Sangeeta, thank you so much. I must commend you that you are always there at all the best shows and you do a really comprehensive and great uh, summary and study of whichever show you go to. So I'm glad to see a friend here. And, uh, you know, now that it's India we're going to talk about, it's nearly two years, Ashmita, since you took over as the head of Pratt & Whitney in India. So what is the status quo of Pratt & Whitney in India now? So let me tell you, yesterday I attended the Air Chiefs Conference and uh, it, it was an interesting remark what one of the generals made who said that uh, we've come to the show and it's like stretching our legs after two years. So I clearly, you know, felt that, got that feeling that we are stretching our legs after two years and coming to the show, to a physical show is great, it's a great pleasure. In India, uh, I took over in early 2020 and you know since then we've had the pandemic but I'm so pleased that traffic is now returning back to pre-pandemic levels. In fact, the civil aviation traffic is at a 85% high and caps have been removed, capacity caps have been removed, so that's that's excellent. I am very optimistic about India on the commercial side and on the military side both, but on the commercial side I would emphasize that traffic will come back and this is the third largest aviation market in the world. And India is only going to grow more and more and comes out stronger after the pandemic. Pratt & Whitney is completely committed to India. We have more than 1,500 engines here across commercial, military and small civil. Uh, we are on the AT20 CEOs, about 600 engines there another 600 engines in small civil and then we have our military engines on the C-17 and the Pilates trainers. So it's interesting again to say that one in every two uh, Indian flies on a Pratt & Whitney engine and that makes me immensely proud, you know, to be, we, we don't call India a market because we are here for the long term. We have an excellent uh, training center. It's our flagship training center, one of the two outside of the US. And that training center in Hyderabad, engineers and technicians work on real-time engines. And not only engineers and technicians from India, but around the world and the APAC region come to the training center to get trained, and it's a certified EASA and DGCA certified training center. So in the last uh, few years, we have done trainings for about 30 operators across 20 countries. So that's an excellent uh, training center we have here. We have an R&D center, which is growing exponentially in Bangalore. We have just started our India Capability Center also in Bangalore where we are hiring at the rate of one employee per day. So we will have, we would have quadrupled, tripled, uh, you know, six times over and ten times over our footprint with employees in India very soon. So we are looking forward to our growth in India growth of both commercial engines and military engines in India. Right, Ashmita, that was great. 
and uh, get going ahead from here you know we have somebody very important sitting next to you and we'd like you to introduce him to our audience so why don't we just go ahead with it so i'm very pleased to introduce you to mark ryan vice president of customer business india and middle east and africa he has a huge portfolio of commercial engines and he's the best person to talk to about the growth of our gtf family of engines right that's wonderful thank you so much ashwita and so now we pan here to mark hi mark welcome to adu we are here at dubai air show and it's wonderful to catch you here so hi, let's sir. go ahead with the story Hi Sangeeta, uh, thanks for joining us. Um, yeah, India is a, is a huge uh, market for, for our rat mini engines. Um, we're actually the biggest supplier of engines in India uh, in the commercial space. Um, and we have you know, premier customers like Indigo and Go First uh, in country uh, operating our, our new GTF product very successfully. And uh, they're all benefiting from the, uh, the tremendous fuel burn advantages that we bring is obviously uh, very important from an environmental and sustainability perspective. That's wonderful. And uh, what is the status quo of the engines in India at the moment? So I'm sorry, say that again. What is the status quo of the engines in India at the moment? The status quo. Yeah. Um, so, so right now we have um, 140 aircraft uh, with GTF with Indigo, uh, and they also have a large fleet of V2500 powered aircraft with Indigo. Um, and then Go First have uh, over 50 uh, GTF aircraft now, and uh, we're continuing to take aircraft as we speak. Um, so uh, it's a it's a tremendous growth story. Um, and we've been with these airlines for some time now, and they've been successful by, by using our products. Right. And uh, in addition to this, since you also have the region uh, under you, uh, so what is the what is the Pratt and Whitney story in the region, apart okay. from India. So um, I look after the African continent and the Middle East region. So right. there's a lot of activity we're seeing right now amongst airlines that are, are looking to acquire narrow body aircraft and also the regional aircraft. So we're seeing a lot of interest in the A220 family of aircraft with Airbus and the Embraer uh, E190 E2 aircraft. Um, and we're seeing customers this week, in fact, here at the show, that are looking at um, acquiring those aircraft and, and tr transferring their fleets to, to a more modern, uh, modern fleet of aircraft. So we see a lot of potential in, in India, um, but also in the Middle East and Africa for these aircraft types. Right now, we have a, on the African continent, for example, we have uh, six or seven customers that have selected the new, new technology aircraft. So that's a tremendous step from where we were, say, five to ten years ago, um, where it was predominantly older, older equipment being operated in the region. Right, and since we are in the Dubai Air Show, so uh, what is, you know, out of, let's say, around 20 countries of the Middle East, what is the sort of uh, business plan you have? Has threat perception in this region, you know, made you change your plans? to what it was earlier or has the pandemic made you change some plans to what it was earlier? So if we could just get some insight into this. So I think that the region has always been important to us as Brett and Winnie. Um, I, I think we've uh, we probably got uh, some, we do have some premier customers in the region already and we're talking to a number of others. I think a lot of the customers that have operated wide bodies potentially in the past are now looking at things like the uh, the A320 family, um, the long range A321 XLR. Um, so I think there's more potential for Airbus aircraft in the region, certainly. Um, and I think the, the regional market, the regional market is, is probably less um, dominant in the, in the Middle East. Uh, the aircraft tend to be bigger, as you know. Um, but there are a lot of people reflecting on the pandemic situation and, and looking for the right aircraft type and fleet mixes for the future. And thank you so much, Mark. Wonderful talking to you. Okay. And next time when you're in India, I'm sure we'll have more to talk about. We'll have more to listen to you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Akita. Okay.